blah, blah. We're gonna do a five minute. I just did a one minute. And what I was talking about is a client, a potential client that I just spoke with, and he's a vendor. He owns a marketing company and he had a client and the client later on, after owing him $3,500, did a chargeback on their credit card. Somehow the credit card company sided with the client, which is, you know, I'm gonna dig a little deeper into the credit card chargeback situation. And so he was referred to me because he wants to sue this lady. And he started using words like principle and pride, and he wasn't gonna let her get away with it. And my honest advice to him was to send her one more demand email. In fact, I said, do it yourself, don't hire a lawyer. And the reality is you're probably gonna lose this. You're just gonna have to chalk it up to experience. And we're gonna take this learning experience and we're gonna improve your contract because there were a lot of problems with his contract. So let's take a step back. So he's offering a service, right? And a lot of times it's really good, by the way, that he had a contract. So many times I talk to business owners that don't have a contract. And that's usually when you're starting off, you don't know better, you do things on a handshake, you think you can trust people, and then eventually you're gonna get burned and you're gonna come and talk to someone like me and I'm gonna be like, listen, you really need to have a contract. So he already had a contract, so that's good. Now, number two is the contract was missing all of the language about what to do if something goes wrong. Like what if the client does a chargeback, right? And so there's a concept in the law, I'm, certainly, I'm certain that I've talked about this in other videos, called the American rule. And I remember learning this in law school. And so the American rule is the following. Each party in a litigation must bear their own costs. What that kind of means is you can go hire the cheapest lawyer in town who's working out of his car, or you can hire the fanciest lawyer who went to the best law school at the biggest law firm. Either way, it's your choice and it's your money. And so in the American system, each party has to bear their own costs, meaning that you're not typically gonna get an award of attorney's fees. People ask me all the time. Now, fortunately, like everything in the law, there's two exceptions. The first exception is if you have a contract, that's the easiest. So if you're a vendor, if you're providing a service, a service provider, make your client sign a contract and in that contract include an attorney's fee clause. And I just counted it out, it's 12 words and it's the prevailing party shall be entitled to reasonable attorney's fees and costs, 12 words. If you have that in your contract, and you come to me and you're like, Eric, this lady did a chargeback for $3,500, then I'm gonna be like, well, listen, I have to charge you, right? I'm not taking a $3,500 case on contingency. Nobody would. Contingency, by the way, is where lawyer will take typically a third of whatever we recover. So I say there's always three variables in a contingency case. There's variable number one is the facts. So you have your version of the story. I'm sure the other person has their version of the story. And then there's the truth, which is usually somewhere in between. Then there's the law, which of course lawyers were supposed to know the law. We can do research and we can make sure we know the law. And number three is does the other person have any money, right? I can have a beautiful case and the law's on my side, the facts are on my side and they file for bankruptcy or they disappear or they're really a homeless person they have no money, right? So you could win and your, your judgment is just a piece of paper and I could end up not collecting anything. So as a lawyer, I'm not gonna take a case like that on contingency because A, it's not enough money and B, you know, I have no guarantee that this person is ever gonna pay. So what I said to the, the client is, listen, send this lady an email, I'll even let you copy me at no charge, and just say, hey, this is my last attempt to find an amicable resolution. Now, as a quick aside, I can't believe that they won the chargeback, the, the consumer. The rule of thumb is that there's the merchant and then there's the consumer, right? If it's MasterCard or Visa, the consumer usually loses and the merchant usually wins. If it's American Express, it's the opposite. If it's American Express, the consumer almost always wins and the merchant loses. And that's my experience having dealt with a bunch of chargebacks. And so I said to him, listen, if you're, if you're gonna hire me to do a demand letter, I'm gonna charge you $2,000. If you're gonna hire me to do a lawsuit, I'm gonna ask for an evergreen retainer of at least $5,000. And now you're adding, you're doing math and you're like, hold on a second, I'm gonna pay you $5,000 to sue someone for 3,500. And I'm like, no, you're not. Because what you're gonna do instead is you're gonna chalk this one up to experience and we're gonna add that language, not only the attorney's fee clause, but we're also gonna add the jurisdiction clause. If your hometown is Dallas, Texas, then you wanna have a clause that says that if we get into a fight, it's gonna be on my turf, in my court, in front of my judges, um, instead of having to potentially sue this lady in California. 
So if you guys are in business, please have a contract. And if you have a contract, please make sure that it's actually something enforceable in court and that'll protect your business, especially with an attorney's fee clause and a jurisdiction clause. So please, if you have any questions, I do free consultations, leave a comment below or reach out to me directly.